The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Karen, what have you got there? It's the prototype that Felix made for the mini pinball kit. Ah, yes. So this does run the mini pinball machine. It can take an Arduino or a Teensy 3.6. It has a 16 by 2 character LCD display, audio amplifier, 16 switches in, 16 lights out, four MOSFET controllers, and four servo ports. Now, how much would you pay? Uh, yeah, so in today's episode, uh, Felix and I are going to work on translating this prototype into an eagle design. He's going to work on finding the libraries and the part numbers, and I will do the layout. And then hopefully we can order some boards. Cool. Let's get started. To the heck pewter. Uh, yeah, the heck pewter. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's Priests. Regrettable Acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, I'm putting together the PCB for the mini pinball machine. I'm going to start with some of the more cumbersome areas first, namely the lights and switches. I think I'm going to use these um, Molex 2.54 or 0.1 inch pitch uh, uh, headers. These are pretty nice. Hopefully we could actually find um, some wiring that has the headers on either end. So we could basically plug one end to the PCB and the other end into your light and call it a day. I'm gonna start with these because these are gonna take up a lot of space. So I, I wanna see how much space these are gonna take up and then uh, I can uh, put in the lights. So I'm gonna put in 16 of these and then 16 more for the lights. Try to keep it in the lower left-hand corner. Um, you know, the original board, it seems kind of full of stuff. There isn't actually a whole lot. I mean, these are just surface mount chips. The adapters take up all the space. So we can always put these chips under the Arduino or the Teensy if we have to or under the LCD. I'm not too worried about it. All right, well, let's see. Um, I'm gonna go in here and actually rename this stuff. So the jumper one, I'm gonna call it switch one. So I'm gonna go to name, click on it, do switch zero, switch one, and so forth. That way it will appear over here. Cause uh, you know, this will make it more obvious. Okay, now I know. Okay, there's switch zero. And see how there's already an air wire on there? That's the ground. So I wanna keep grounds always on the same side, like on the left side. All right, well, I will name those and get them laid out. Okay, here are the 16 switch Molex connectors. Now I'm gonna think about how to orient the circuits in relation to them. So we can see the air wires here. These are the connections based off the schematic that we have to make with traces. Um, so I'm gonna think about, you know, the kind of like the straightest path to make. So uh, look at that, see how it kind of crisscrosses? But if I go this way, it's a little bit more straightforward. See that? Especially like the first four. So I think having the chip flipped in relation to the switches for both of them actually. See how that one looks like it's crisscrossed and this one looks See, pretty straightforward, see that? I think I'm gonna go with that. Right now I have the grid spacing set to 0.1 inch. Pretty chunky, that made it easy to like uh, position our screw holes. I mean, I'll have to go into a finer pitch when I start running traces, but I just wanna get everything in a general place. Uh, these are kinda close to the edge of the board. I mean, these, I'll probably remove these part numbers here just cause it's kind of extraneous, but um, if things are too close to the board, uh, your uh, silk screen might not print or other aberrations may occur. But then if I push these up one, it might be a little too high. Yeah, well, it's not too bad. That might look a little bit more respectable, but then I'm gonna move these up as well. These will have have wires attached, but if I bunch them up too much, I think that will intimidate people. And also you always should keep in mind the thickness of human fingers. I usually have a rule of thumb, I guess quite literally, of about uh, 0.5 inches of space. All right, well, I'll get these in place. Uh, I'm not gonna start running the traces until I have pretty much the main components on the board. Um, there should be enough space between these. I'll probably run the traces above the switches, like over and then down. Then of course, this will be a two layer board with vias, so that'll make it really easy to route things. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna keep power down here. Um, microcontroller boards up here, screen up here, and input output plugs in the lower left. 
Here's the constant current LED driver. Uh, we've used this in a couple projects, so I had an Eagle file laying around. It's not a very well-drawn part, so it must be a part that I drew myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this, uh, you source the LEDs with uh, current and then it sinks into this device. And then you use one resistor to set what the constant current value is. I don't know exactly what that is yet because we, um, we don't know what our LED lights are going to be, but the rest of it I can hook up. So it's got clock, the same as the um, switches in, and then it has an output, or I'm sorry, well it has an output coming from the microcontroller, so light out of the microcontroller goes into serial in on the light driver. And then it has a separate latch because it's inversed of the switches. So let's take a look at this in the board layout. So we got a, another big mess here to fix. Great. So let's uh, just start putting these into position. I'll basically move these just like the switches. Probably draw like a big uh, line on the silk screen to say, this is a different area of the board. You know, to help people out. Like that Sony PlayStation prototype. It was very well labeled. Made it so easy to figure out everything. You know, like that would help if like Indiana Jones was in a cave and everything was really well labeled and he'd be like, oh, that's the lever I push to make a boulder fall. Uh, uh. And then he would do this. So here is our driver chip. Same as before, we're gonna kind of, ooh, yeah, shoot. Oh, okay, that, that actually looks pretty good. That's not too bad. So what we'll do here is we can basically connect the left side of the chip, you know, straight over, and then we can connect this side pretty much straight over as well. We just have to use vias. So we'll uh, go over on the top here, via down, and go over on the bottom to this one. Again, we'll probably, uh, oh, here's our constant current resistor. I'll put that over here. Well, I've, I've also added uh, capacitors for each component because you should really have a capacitor on every component to help condition the power to make it nice and smooth and ripple free so your circuit works well. And I'm going to try to keep all the surface mount stuff at uh, 085 package size. I'm going to try to find an LCD now. We have this one that we use as a test, but you know, I have to find something that we can get a lot of. This one's on Elma 14. Let's see, I want something that's backlit. Black on white, five volt parallel English and Japanese. Transflective, well, they're all transflective. Let's take a look at the data sheet. Hmm. Okay, this one has an LED backlight and a heater. <laughs> I haven't seen that many heaters on these uh, type of devices. The reason you would need that is because when it gets cold, LCDs become less responsive because you know, it's actually, you know, crystals that are rotating to like block or allow light. And if it's cold, they don't move as quickly. So we don't have to use the heater, but um, what I'm looking for is the LED backlight, which it does have. Unfortunately, there's not an Eagle part for this. I think I may be forced to make a part manually. So here is the drawing of it. The pitch is 2.54 or 0.1 inch in America units. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like the chicken and the egg. So yeah, if you look at the standard pitch spacing, which one do you think came first? The one that has the weird number or the one that's 0 0.1? Mm. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go into Eagle. Let's do new library. Library, that's where uh, Wishbone would want you to go. You know, your, your favorite PBS dog. Okay, so this one has 18 pins. All oh, right, uh, what is this thing called? LCR, blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's give it a package name. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add some symbols, which I think I need to do it the other way around. All right, so these are gonna be the pins. We need 18 of them, even though we're not gonna use the built-in heater. Although I guess we could, you know, if you wanna play this thing in Antarctica or something. I guess if you were stationed down there, you'd be pretty bored. What if they get good internet down there? Okay, so there's our 18 pins. Now this is the schematic uh, representation of it. So this doesn't necessarily have to match what it looks like. It's just, it's, you know, the representation that you'll see in your schematic drawing. Yeah, that definitely looks like something. So now that we have that, we can go into the package. Now this is, this is where the real money happens. I'm gonna call it the same thing. 602 DSF forward slash DW whatever. Creating a package. Okay, so now this is what has to actually match the physicality of it, right? So the first thing that I look at here is that we have 18 pins that are spaced out at 0.1 inches pitch, pretty standard pitch. And then we'll also need to know what their relation is between the mounting holes and the outer uh, perimeter of this drawing. But as you can see, this is a ridiculously dimension drawing, so I think I can do it. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna wanna find the center point of this first. So let's see. 
This thing is 4.803. All right, so we're gonna draw a wire, your favorite TV show. So we're gonna actually wanna go in halves because we wanna start at the center. So the height is 1.732. 1.732 divided by two is 0.866. Actually, maybe I should do that a different way. I'll open up another calculator. Hopefully I have enough RAM for all of this. 4.803 divided by two. Okay, so those are the half measurements of the square that I, I wanna make. So the reason I did it that way is so I can do this. I can just draw a rando placement line here and then just jump out of it. Now I can go to the information of the line and click on it. Okay, so I'm gonna go from negative 2.4015 and then negative 0.866 to positive of those same numbers. And by doing it this way, the line will be, okay, well, <laughs> I didn't want to draw a diagonal line. Uh, oh yeah, this one needs to say negative. There we go. See, now what I can do is I can add another line. So this is gonna be from 2.4015, negative 0.866 to same horizontal measurement and positive 0.866. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing that to complete the square. And then once I have, uh, well, actually I can probably do everything based off the center point. Because the, the, center, the center point's important because that's, um, you know, when you're positioning your part, it is based off your center align point, which is this um, bomb site right here. And also if you have a pick and place machine, it uses that as the center point. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's good to have it in the center. Negative 2.4015. Yay, all right, that's what's the next important thing. I would say probably these um, drill holes here. Okay, so it is a 0.138 diameter hole and its position is, well, if you see here, the position of the holes, the center points, are relative to the center of the unit. So we can position those in the same way. So we got 4.528 divided by two, that's a 2.264 offset. And then the vertical on those is uh, 1.4, Five seven. So everything in this was drawn in metric except for the um, <laughs> except for the placement holes, because everything else is like twenty millimeters, thirty millimeters, twenty five millimeters, and then it has like this really weird imperial number, uh, one point four five seven divided by two. Okay, yeah. So these are our center points for the four mounting holes of the apocalypse. Now something else I haven't really come across before an eagle, because. You know, I'm not that good at Eagle. I just sort of know how to use it, basically. Um, can we actually put a hole as part of a part? You'd think you would. Oh yeah, I guess we can. All right, what's the closest we have to 138? Uh, I guess quarter inch is the eighth inch. Eighth inch is the biggest we can go. So I'm just gonna slap in these uh, four holes. Then I'm gonna go in on each one and give it a position based off the number I divided up. Now, unfortunately, we don't have this particular LCD here yet. We'll have to order it. Normally, I would just print this out and then place it under the actual part and then visually see if it matches. Oh, I can't do that yet, but I'll just try to do the best job I can drawing the part. And then I just cross my fingers. I'm gonna check here. Let's see, pad one, pad two, pad 19, four, eight, and what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm, looks like one of them might have got, might have jumped in the numbering. The reason I'm checking this is because when I add the signals and connect everything, I wanna make sure that it is right. Oh yeah, okay, we jump from uh, six to eight. Hmm, they'll automatically number themselves in the order of which you add them. So if this is six, and add another one, it should be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Make sure it's actually numbered 18. Okay, that's correct. All right, now I can go into the device manager. So there's three parts to a library. There's um, the symbol, which is what will be in your schematic. And I should actually label these things. I will in a second. Then there's your package, which is what gets placed onto the PCB. And then there's a device, which refers to how everything connects. And I haven't created that yet. So first I'm gonna go into the um, schematic view and actually name these. And I'm gonna base it off of the document here. So VSS, VDD, VO, uh, RS, read, write, enable, data, anode, cathode, sometimes spelled with a K, <laughs> and then the heater, which we're not gonna use. Although you never know, it might be useful. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna label these and then we'll go into the package manager and put it all together to finish up the library so we can put it into our design. 
All right, so we're gonna go into the device now and bring it all together. So I'm gonna create another device. I'm just gonna call it the same thing. So what you can do is like, let's say you have something really simple like a SOIC 16 uh, footprint. You could create the footprint once and then attach multiple devices to it since many things use that. Okay, so we're gonna go down to new. I'm gonna create a new package variant. I'll call it standard. Great, now we need to go over here and add the symbol again, which is like the schematic. Great, now we can connect them together down here. All right, so this is why I wanted to make sure I knew what the um, pads were called. All right, so see these aren't really in any specific order, so now I've gotta basically double check them all against my document here. I guess I can't really show you both on the screen at the same time. But trust me, I'm, I'm looking at the document when I do this. Okay, so pin one is ground. That's pin three actually, VO. VDD is pin two. RS is four, correct. Read write is five, correct. Heater negative is 18. So sometimes these will just pop up in the right order and you just go boom, 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 connect, connect, connect. But uh, sometimes they don't, as in right now. So that's why I'm double checking everything. Enable is six. Okay, so let's see. Bit seven is 14. Bit six is 13. Bit five is 12, 11. 10 this should go down to seven. Um, we're probably gonna use four bit mode with this LCD, but I'm still gonna, you know, obviously connect everything. And then the backlight anode is 15. Anode is another word for positive. And the backlight cathode, which is negative or ground is, or K is 16. Cool. All right, that should be everything that we need. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Let's put it in my master library. I'll call it, um, guess what? I'm gonna call it the name of the part. Now, a better way to do this is to combine everything into one big library, but uh, you know. You know how we do here on the Ben Heck Show. Whatever whatever gets it done, and then it's Miller time. Okay, oh, I don't think we can have a slash like that, so. Ah, great. Okay, the library should be created, so now we can go into our Eagle file. Of course, we're gonna go, go into schematic view. Oh, wait, I have to use it. So I gotta go to library, use the thing we just did. Now I should be able to place it. Oh, there it is. Well, look at this brilliant description, but it's enough. Place that wherever. All right, everything is labeled. I don't think I really designed that correctly. Oh, we don't have the pin numbers indicated. Now yeah, maybe I can go back and do that. Uh, but the important thing is if we go in to our board view, it should appear, there it is. Okay, I've got quite a few parts uh, laid out here on the board. I've run a lot of the digital signals. I mostly just have to attach the um, spy signals between the Teensy Arduino and our IO chips. One thing I'm gonna do before I do that is uh, create a floodplain of copper. I mean, you've probably noticed on PCBs, there's copper everywhere, usually a ground plane. So I'm gonna go over here and get my polygon tool. I'm gonna click and make a perimeter just around the outside of the PCB. Now here's the trick, I'm gonna click on it and call it ground. So now I've made a big giant ground plane. And when I do rat's nest, it will calculate it and it'll fill everything in. Now this is useful because anything that was ground and was unconnected will now be connected. See how these pads have uh, crosses through them? So they're, they're now connected as well as our chips. So we have this active low and this uh, signal here. Those are both connected now. So yeah, it uh, it kind of makes a little bit of a mess, but it also helps you, um, you know, it cleans up a lot of ground stuff for you. Like over here on the Arduino, the ground's now connected. So I can see I only have a few things left on the Arduino to hook up actually. Uh, one negative of this is when you do run a trace in the filled layer, like the uh, top here. Um, see how you can't really see it? Until you hit rat's nest again, then you can see it. So that part's not ideal, but you know, I usually wait until about, you know, halfway, three quarters through before I do this, but it works out pretty well. Um, the perimeters, like what keep, you know, how, how close it gets to stuff, that's set by your uh, design rules check. So I'm gonna load it. I'm gonna probably use Osh Park for this. So I'm gonna use their DRU file because their DRU file knows what their tolerances are. And then it checks your file to make sure it accepts their tolerances. The default tolerances that come with Eagle are pretty uh, conservative, so I usually try to load up a custom one from the, the specific vendor. All right, well, I'm gonna keep on uh, doing these traces. PCB should be done. So let's just go over all the parts. Power comes in through this 2.1 millimeter jack. It goes to a push button switch. We selected a push button switch because since the power core is right there, it's easier to do this than this. And we have a very large capacitor for the 12 volt line, which goes to a five volt regulator, which also has a big electrolytic capacitor on it. Okay, that regulator goes to the five volt input of the Arduino there. It also goes to the five 
volt input of the Teensy. And then both the Teensy and the Arduino output three volts with their own built-in regulators. That three volts goes to the switch integrated circuits. That way, you know, we don't send five volts back to the Teensy. We have 16 switches, 16 lights. We have a light driver, has 16 bits on it. 16 bits of switch input. And then over here we have connectors for four servos. A large electrolytic capacitor right next to those servos because servos can draw a lot of power and cause spikes in power. Then we have the audio amplifier that is set to a fixed gain. And then finally, the speakers where they hook up. Oh, but that's not all. We also have the LCD screen, which is humongous. I also put these uh, white silk screens around the screw holes. Uh, that silk screen is a uh, 0.26 inches in diameter. Basically it represents the head of a screw just to make sure that uh, it's not bumping into anything such as this uh, jack here. It'd actually be nice if I could get another screw above the uh, power switch, but I think it'll probably be all right. I mean, really I should have the screw flanking the power switch and the power jack, but I don't think I can quite fit that. Uh, yeah, I wasn't able to put any extra IO headers in because this is quite a mess already. Um, <laughs> The Arduino has some pretty tight tolerances here, and also it's got some weird pitch spacing. And then the Teensy also has uh, not a whole lot of space between the pins. And what really messes it up is we have these extra connections here that we're not using, so this kind of get in the way. Oh well, but you know, that could be useful for someone down the line who wanted to populate everything on their Teensy. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the design rules check, and then I guess we can send this off to get boards made. Ben, this week you've been working on designing the PCB for the mini pinball game. How's that been going? Yeah, it went pretty well. Uh, Felix and I kind of tag teamed it. He was finding the libraries and the part numbers and sending them over, and I was doing the PCB design, and uh, yeah, we got it done in just a couple days. Nice, so next is to send it off to have it professionally made? Uh, yeah, that's correct. We're gonna send it off to get some boards, probably from Osh Park, um, you know, three prototypes. And while we wait for those boards to come in, we're going to work on the creative aspect of the pinball machine next in the in the next episode. Ben, can we make it sloth themed? We'll have to discuss what theme it is, but I just want to give it like a, you know, a base generic theme with some artwork and that we can use for our prototype unit. Then maybe it could also be one of the generic themes that could be included as a sticker set in the actual product. Do you have any ideas for themes for the mini pinball kit? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time and start a design made.